In this video, I want to talk about how con videos can be made more accessible for all learners. And what I mean by that is that um, many of the con videos, they're great, they're amazing. I've used them as a learner to get through some pretty serious subjects like linear algebra and business calculus and calculus. And I use them as a teacher to refresh certain concepts that I want to teach my students. But I'm unable to use them for my students because my students are blind or visually impaired. And I attempted to do this several years ago when I discovered Khan Academy and I assigned them videos to watch slash listen to and they started laughing and uh, taught me a very valuable lesson about um, paying attention to what I'm listening to and um, pointing out that the language is often very vague, very vague language. In other words, there's lots of this's and there's and here's and over there and take this point and use this point over here and subtract the two values or move this from this side to that side or this side of the triangle with that side of the triangle. And when you are blind or visually impaired, you don't know where this is or that is or over there. It's very vague language. So you have different learners that are wanting to access these videos. My student population that I work with, they're blind and visually impaired. But also, I feel as if more specific language would assist with the English language learner or the English as a second language learner, and also with learners that have learning differences. Um, some learners are very auditory and not necessarily want to watch something that's happening on the screen, but um, they will listen to it. And or they'll watch it on the screen, but to have more specific language really helps them process and keep track of what's going on the screen. Also, a transcript could be printed off of these videos they could follow along in print format, which assists with certain, certain learning styles. So how is this accomplished? Um, you've heard me say more specific language or descriptive language, and that's what I'm suggesting happen for future videos um, with Khan Academy, with your explainers, with Khan himself, that he use, they use more descriptive specific language. And in the next couple slides, I'd like you to watch and listen my demonstration on how that could be done. Let's do an introduction to the Pythagorean theorem in this video. I've drawn a right triangle on my whiteboard. Pythagorean theorem applies itself to the right triangle. It helps us to find a missing side of a right triangle. So this particular triangle has uh, three vertexes. One is at the very top left vertex X. It goes straight down to the bottom left vertex Y, and then straight across to the right to vertex Z, and then back up to the left at an angle um, to the top vertex X. At vertex Y, there's a right angle indicator, that little square box in our right triangle that indicates that it's 90 degrees. Um, and there's some anatomy to our right triangle that we need to review. On the left-hand side from X to Y, it's called a leg. And on the bottom from Y to Z is also called a leg, where the two legs come together at Y, at that vertex Y, and they form a 90 degree angle. In right triangles, the two legs will meet together to form the right angle. And then directly across from the right angle is the side called the hypotenuse. That's from vertex Z in the bottom right to vertex X up in the top left, or vice versa, top left. Uh, vertex X to bottom right vertex Z. That's our side opposite our 90 degree angle which is called the hypotenuse. And the Pythagorean theorem states that if we take the measurement of a leg and square it and add it to the measurement of the other leg and square it, it's going to equal the measurement of the hypotenuse side squared. So in other words, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And a very popular way of writing this theorem or this formula is we write a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We substitute in variables for the legs. We call one leg a 
and another leg B, and then we substitute in a variable for the hypotenuse and call it C. So the Pythagorean theorem is more popularly referred to as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We can use this formula to find a missing leg or missing side, missing hypotenuse or leg or missing side of our right triangle if we know the measurements of two of the sides. So if we know that one of the legs is three meters and another leg is four meters, we could figure out the hypotenuse, that missing side, um, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we substitute in those values for in our formula. So if one leg is three, we would instead say three squared, we'd substitute in the three for that a value, plus four squared, because we're substituting in the four meters for that other leg, equals c squared. And we do some basic algebra to this equation. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. We'd simplify. 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16, and that equals c squared. And then 9 plus 16 is 25, and 25 equals c squared. And don't stop there. c is not by itself. It has that little square next to it. And to undo squaring, we need to square root. So we're going to square root both sides of our equation. Whatever we do to one side, we've got to do the other. So the square root of 25 equals the square root of c squared. So the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of c squared is c. So we discover that the hypotenuse is 5 meters. And this is a very popular right triangle that's used in construction. It's called the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. We could also utilize this same formula to find a missing leg. So what if we weren't told that left leg was 3 meters? We were just told that the base leg or that bottom leg y to z is 4 meters, and our hypotenuse was 5 meters. So we would redo, we would solve our formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared by substituting in those values. We don't know a, so we'd write a squared plus um, 4 squared equals 5 squared, and we simplify and get a squared plus 16 equals 25. We've got to isolate a, so we're going to subtract 16 from both sides of our equation. So a squared is going to equal 9 by subtracting 16 from both sides. Square root both sides, because we've got to get a by itself, and a equals 3, because the square root of a squared is a, equals the square root of 9, which is 3. And sure enough, it better be 3. That's what it was originally when we started, but we decided to try it out for solving for a leg. So this demonstrates how to use the Pythagorean theorem solving for the hypotenuse, the longest side, or solving for one of the legs. Notice with the hypotenuse, um, we're going to add the legs together in square root, and with a leg, we're going to have to do some subtraction, use our additive inverse and some basic um, algebra principles and then square root both sides to find a missing leg. As long as you know two sides of your right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side. So there is an example, very quickly, of using descriptive language. It wasn't super polished in the graphics format, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you how to use specific descriptive language to explain a concept and not utilizing vague language like words like this, there, here, over there, this side, that side, move it here, and instead using very specific descriptive language to explain the concept and the process. And this provides access for all learners, in my humble opinion, most especially blind and visually impaired learners, but also I feel English language learners and learners with learning differences that would prefer a more specific descriptive style to process the information that's happening on the screen. So I'm hopeful that the con team will consider this, um, may consider also contacting myself and my team to collaborate on future training of future explainers and current explainers and potentially Khan himself in producing videos that are more accessible for all learners, especially blind and visually impaired learners, English language learners, and learners with learning differences, so that Khan can continue to meet its mission to provide a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. Thank you so much for your time and for considering this, and I hope to hear from you soon.